Well, I'm out here in the woods on this beautiful afternoon, and I came out here actually to collect one kind of plant, but I found three different plants in the same area that I thought I'd show everybody. And the first one here that I'm going to show you is, oh, I'm going to pull the camera over onto this hand here so I don't block out the, the sun so much, but it's this one back here on the other side of this little fallen log. And you can kind of see the different shape of this leaf. It's it's uh, kind of whirls together like that. Uh, let's see if I can pull this one out here. Kind of see very deeply notched lobes. And this is a wild geranium. And wild geraniums, um, in a little bit, is going to come up on a taller stem. It's going to have a five-petaled purple flower. And what it's going to... Um, it, it, the, it's going to be a purple flower with a lighter colored center and out of the middle of it is going to come this little thing that looks like a crane's bill and that's what some people, my grandfather always called it the crane's bill. Um, but it's the wild geranium and wild geraniums are full of tannins which is astringent and what I use it for is I use the upper part, the above ground part, I use that internally and I use the roots for external. And the reason I do that is because the roots have so much more of the healing energy in it, and the more the tannins. And almost too much to be taking internally. It's not going to, I mean, you're not going to get poisoned or anything, but what it does is it tightens things up. And so I, I make a tincture out of the roots. And basically, I chop the roots up, kind of mash them up, push them in, pack very tightly a uh, a jar, like a pint jar, canning jar of them, and then pour over that a good quality alcohol, at least 100 proof. Um, if the, the higher the proof, the, the more of the medicine it's going to extract. So I, I make a tincture out of the root, and then you can just use that and wipe it over, like if you get a cut or a burn or something like that, you can wipe it over. It's, it's, you're going to be using alcohol, alcohol, so it is going to have a slight burning sensation. But it tightens up the... Um, the, the cut. You can also wipe it across your face, like if you have very large pores, you can wipe it across your pores and they do help, it helps tighten up the pores. So I use the root externally. The aerial plant, which I usually wait till it gets a little bit bigger than this, but you can use, do it at this size as well, as well. I use that as a internal medicine and again I usually make it as a tincture and um, same way as I do with the root, I just make it in a separate jar. And that you use for I, I, for tightening up, again, tightening up your bowels. So if you've been indulging just a little bit too much, eating very rich food, um, uh, let's see what else, see, you've been drinking a little bit, you got loose stool almost, maybe even to the point of diarrhea, you can take a half teaspoon of this every six to eight hours and uh, that, that'll help relieve that. You, you, it kind of makes your stomach less gurgly, and I shouldn't even say your stomach, it's probably more your intestines that it makes less gurgly, but it makes that, that feeling kind of go away and, uh, and you know, kind of helps you shut down the diarrhea. Anyway, so that is that little flower. Again, let me hold it, the camera the other hand. That little plant is the wild geranium. Then we come over to this plant here. And this plant is cleavers, and another word for it is bed straw. And the reason they call it bed straw is because they used to make tea out of the leaves or use the leaves for salads, and then the stems were left over, and that's what kids stuff their mattresses with. And so the kids would have to go out in the woods and gather up this these cleavers. And two of the ways, um, and then they would use the the straw, the um, oh, the stems for their beds. And two of the ways you can tell cleavers is by the time they're this size, if you run your finger behind them, they kind of stick, stick to your finger. And let's see if I, my hands are rough enough that it'll stick to my hand. Oh, no, it won't. But anyway, <laughs> that's because my hands aren't quite rough enough right now. But it does stick, I can feel it sticking when I, when I run my finger over it. I just can't show it to you with just one hand. 
but they kind of have a like a velcro feeling to it especially on the bottom side of their leaves and the other thing is is if you look here let's see if I can do this without getting it too close um, the the leaves kind of whirl around the stem and that you can see and then the next group comes up and it whirls around the stem now this is a medicinal and what we use it for out here is kind of a a blood purifier it's you've been eating usually a lot of meat and root crop throughout the summer and we make salads out of this um, eat it that way but you can also um, make it in, into a tincture or into an um, an oil or something and uh, you can use that as a blood purifier I just per personally I usually just eat it until I can't stand salads anymore which will be a long time coming but um, the other thing you can do with it is you can make it into an oil again you do it sa pretty much the same way as you do a tincture you shove put it into a jar pack the jar up and cover it with an oil good quality oil like olive oil and you can put it on scars um, age spots freckles things like that and it helps lighten it and especially if you put it in an oil with uh, watercress that that really helps lighten the skin up lightens those um, areas up and um, they are looking at it now some people even use it for like if you have a lesion almost like a skin cancer lesion they'll put it on that um, I know a friend of mine she her, her father had skin cancer and when he'd first start getting the the little skin cancer thing he would take and rub uh, oil a cleaver on it and he would say that that would stem it off and hold it off for a little bit he said it always healed the skin but what's usually the best thing for cleavers is just to chow them down that's what I've been doing here without while I'm talking to you and the third one here is this little plant here and this is the one I actually came out to gather and this is a horrible plant in fact I'm going to pull the whole thing out called garlic mustard and this is a European plant. It doesn't belong here in the United States and it can take over a woodlot very quickly. Um, it's, a, it's just a nasty little plant and when it does it shades out all these other plants because uh, it grows a lot faster than they do. It shades them out and um, it kills them and then it takes over. Garlic mustard came from Europe. They all, all, I, I've heard it called um, hedge mustard or jack of the hedge it's a very if you just take a bite off this leaf it's very very bitter you won't like it um, but it does have a nice garlicky smell but if you take it and you make it just like you would uh, basil in pesto it gets rid of that bitter flavor it's just oh it's just really great and that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna gather up a bunch of it I usually do about three cups of it packed cups and um, grind it up put it in the food processor with I don't use pine nuts because we don't have a whole lot of pine nuts around here I usually use uh, walnuts but walnuts and some olive oil and a few cloves of garlic and then some Parmesan cheese and um, pour, put it over um, pasta and it's oh my goodness is it good but um, there's something about mixing this stuff with olive oil and uh, and cheese that just kind of gets rid of that yucky bitter flavor but it's it's very pretty it it's a very pretty green sauce looks just the same color as that leaf and um, and very delicious if you like pesto you'll love this stuff um, but anyway the good thing about this is you want to pull this stuff out of your woods you don't want to have it so when you go out to gather it especially this time of the year this is a perfect time of the year it's when the leaves taste the best pull it all the way out by the roots take the leaves home um, but the root you can't just leave laying on the ground this root will literally if I left it like this would literally plant itself again so anyway that's garlic mustard and then we have cleavers and I'm probably going to take some of those home to put in my salad and or to put in a salad and then over here we have a oh, little too close we have wild geranium and we got a wild medicinal this is a wild medicinal and a wild edible and then we have this which is a domestic or it, it's it's a wild edible here but it is from it's a uh, invasive anyway from Europe okay